My name is Ellen DeLapp and my business is ProfessionalOrganizer.com and I help people make time and space for what's important to them. Mm -hmm. We're here tonight because we're going to get prepared for in case of an emergency. And I was excited that the library is being so proactive on this. There is a podcast and they're also recording, so any of our questions will be recorded as well. There's three handouts. The first one that I'm going to be talking from primarily is uh, the one that is, Are You Ready? Disaster Preparedness and Personal Organization. Tonight we're going to cover some of the more important aspects. And of course, your input is also very valuable because all of us have different experiences that can add to each of our preparedness. So I'm going to have you share as well as what I'm going to be presenting tonight. A lot of my information comes from a book called Organizing for Disaster by Judith Kohlberg. It's a re resource at the bottom. And then I also have some other resources that are listed on my website, which is professional-organizer.com. So let's get started. I think we're going to have some people coming in from time to time, but I like to um, start on time because I think that's an important thing. Okay. So um, first of all, we want to think about why do we want to get organized for a disaster. And I think it all comes down to, in stressful situations, we want to have a, a level of preparation so we feel more in control. And um, it's also about us getting things together ahead of time and getting things ready that we know are important to us. Um, our family safety, of course, is our first consideration. And family safety applies to whether we stay or whether we go. And so that's something that has to be communicated in your family and decided, are we going to be staying regardless of the weather, which many people in Kingwood chose to do during the Rita evacuation. And then a lot of people also decided to leave. So part of your preparation depends on what your decisions are. And um, it's just a really good communication to get started having that conversation in your family. Um, there's a hurricane adage called, run from the water, hide from the wind. So do what you feel most comfortable with in that preparation. So secondly, we want to consider how to protect our property. George Carlin says, home is where our stuff is. So again, we want to think the nature of the disaster is going to determine our preparedness. We want to take the important stuff with us. And the important stuff has many different levels. And we're going to talk a little bit about what the, that important stuff is tonight. So, and what is important also depends on what type of leaving the house we're doing. So if we're leaving in case of a disaster, we're going to take a certain level of things. If we're leaving on vacation, we would take different things. So we want to determine what's important and be as far-reaching as we can. So there's several different time frames when we think about disaster. We're talking primarily tonight about hurricanes. So usually we only have several days notice, and we, this falls into a time frame of June to November. So we may want to be thinking about preparing on an ongoing basis, even though we have several days to get things together. If it was the case of a flood, as in the instance of Alicia years ago, a lot of people were inundated with water. They only had several hours notice. And that can happen any time in Houston. I mean, a very hard rain here can cause flooding. So in that case, we want to be prepared at a moment's notice. And then there are other emergencies that we want to be thinking about in case of fire. We want to just make preparation a priority um, to get started and just get ready just in case. So we're going to talk a little bit about the paper and finances that we want to prepare, important items and valuables, and communication with our family. So let's, of course, start with paper. We kind of have a lot of different papers. Yes? I can I have a comment on the paper. Uh, sure. We have a, a notebook specifically for putting in the box and the flashlights and all kinds of things that have, like, my Social Security card, my uh, picture of my ID, uh, my birth certificate. Good. And, and You're talking about all the paper. vital documents, which are very important. And those are things that you could replace but would be very difficult to replace. So in gathering all those things, many of those things are housed in a safe deposit box. And you have a copy at your home. And that copy you would want to take with you for sure. And some of those things you also have the originals of. Um, right, that's what I have. I have certificate copies of my birth certificate and good. 
one, one, like you said, one of them in the bar, in the safe deposit box, and the other one is on my persona. Not on me, but you know, on, in my notebook, I can grab it on a moment's notice and Good. stick it in the box. There it goes. Good. You want to make the papers easy to locate in your regular files so that you can you know where they are. And you want to make a copy to carry with you in a portable carrier or in a small safe using Ziplocs to create categories and so they're waterproof as well. Because with all these different papers, you still want to know what do I have and how do I easily find them. I've made a small example of some of the papers and how you would want to carry them so that you can easily recognize what you have. And this is not waterproof, so I wouldn't recommend this, but this is just an example of what, how you might set up a small safe. And small safes are very easily available and inexpensive locally. So of course you would want your social security card and your driver's license. If you didn't have your originals, you would want copies of them, and the originals would be in your safe deposit box. Your birth certificate, again a copy, original in the safe deposit box, your passport, your will, um, medical information, your any legal documents that pertain to specific legal situations like your marriage certificate, um, divorce certificates, things like that. You also want to have a copy of what some of your bank statements, just one, the most recent one, a copy of your auto insurance, a copy of your home insurance, a copy of your life insurance, and a copy of your safe deposit inform box information and the key. So again, it's not so much um, how you transport them, but if you are leaving your house, you would want a small fireproof safe to carry them in, but in an orderly fashion so that you can find them when you need them. Um, if you chose to only keep them in a safe deposit box, you still would want to keep some of these things with you. Um, the originals, I you pretty regularly keep them in safe deposit boxes because they're hard to duplicate and if you had to go back and get them. The other important financial documents you want to have could pertain to your taxes. If you had one year of your taxes, that would be sufficient. A lot of people recommend carrying seven years back, but I think they can locate your documents by the IRS. You don't have to carry all of them with you. Um, and keep your safe deposit box key, the combination to your safe with you. And all of these things, you want to update them every six months. And a good way to remember how to do that is when the time changes, like we spring forward and fall back, is to go in and update the records that you're taking with you, just in case. Um, now, I said you can use Ziplocs to keep things dry. You can get a fireproof safe. Um, do what's most easy for you to accomplish, because you want to make sure that you're just getting this job done as opposed to researching the most um, effective fire safe, that kind of thing. And you want to make it easy to carry. So um, does anybody have anything they want to share about some of the documents that they brought on? Um, like I know you all said you came from New Orleans. I and basically Katrina. did what you, you know, mm -hmm. you're speaking. Your, your medicines and all yeah. Yes, medication yeah, and medication list. Mm -hmm. Doctors, pharmacy, have to make sure you have all those numbers. Right, pharmacy. And the good thing is Walgreens anymore right. carries yeah. all of your right. prescriptions. So if you just yeah. make, it, yeah. make an effort to go to one of the uh, pharmacies, yeah. it's a lot easier. So let's talk a little bit about important items and valuables because more than just papers are irreplaceable. So we have some family heirlooms sometimes, family correspondence, and there's just other information that's just very valuable to us that if it were lost, it would be devastating. So we want to keep these other items updated regularly and keep them in an easily accessible place. So one of the most important things is usually our computers. And in um, Rita, a lot of us try to bring our computers with us. But now we have these little flash drives that take the information off. So all we need is the flash drive as opposed to taking the computer with us. So it's very important to back up regularly because of the security that goes on with your computer anyway. So just be sure you're labeling your flash drive so you know when is the last time you updated. And be sure that um, as you update, you keep the most recent one with your other important documents. 